Number one, I want us to understand that tolerance, tolerance underscores disagreement. I tolerate you. I tolerate you simply because I don't agree with you. But what that means is that while at the conceptual level, I hold a disagreement, at the practical level, I am doing nothing to hurt you or to disadvantage you because of an ideological difference. So what I will do is to see how to get you over to my side. That's why you have proselytes. Are you with me? Any day that I do not believe in the narrative of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 to 5, I will cease to be a Christian. If I don't believe those things, I will no longer be a Christian. Do you know how the Bible says it? The Bible says that if Jesus Christ is not risen from the dead, our, we are believed in vain, our faith is in vain. It, there is no Christianity without the resurrection. That's what the Bible says. So you cannot say we worship the same God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. Glorious of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and of truth. And out of that fullness have all we received. Grace on top of grace. So don't I have a right to think you dishonor my Lord if you think him any less than what is revealed in Holy Scripture? And over and above all, this same Jesus that we are talking about, he is not a figment of the imagination of people. So number one, he was a real historical figure. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Do you even know the absurdity of trying to purport that God deceived me into believing that Jesus was crucified, even though he was really not crucified. Because there's a theory that says, well, God made it look like they crucified him, but he was not actually crucified, which means God is the architect of my belief in the crucifixion of Jesus. Right? But, God is also the architect of my deception. Because God is the one that deceived me into believing that Jesus Christ was crucified, even though he was not crucified. If you believe in a God that deceives, we don't serve the same God. That's number one. Number two, if you believe in a God that can deceive, how do you know that the version he told you is not the real deception? All right? How do you know that he didn't come to me and say, you know, I told those people that I actually didn't allow your Savior to die. So, a God that is capable of deceiving people is not the God that is revealed in Scripture. Do you know the meaning of I am that I am? That is what I am is what I am. He was trying to say to Moses in the immediate, because Moses is asking all these plenty of questions and is, un, and is unsure. And God is saying to him, when you go to Egypt and you come back to this place, you will realize that what I am now is what I am. What I am is what I am. That means I was what I was. Huh? I am what I was. And I am what I am. What I will be, I will be. What I will be, I am, is a statement of absolute fidelity. Yes, sir. To say I am the Lord, I change not. So I know that God cannot have a mood swing. And say, you know, I really wanted to save you, but that day I was in a very good mood. But the day you died like this was a bad day. <laughs> huh? it, it was a bad day. I, I don't feel like it anymore. It's not that kind of God that I said. He is the I am that I am. Ageless, changeless, unwavering. 
that we might have consolation that have fled unto God, unto Jesus for refuge. Such a God becometh us. All of that is to say to you that tolerance is a powerful thing because this agreement is a real thing. Yes, sir. So it's to say until your view changes. Right? Hold it until my view changes. I hold it. And you are not going to punish me for my views. And I'm not going to punish you for your views. Even though I do not believe in your views. And you do not believe in my views. So we, it's a battle of ideas. I'd like you to know, sir and ma, that anywhere that human beings are serious, they understand that views and beliefs do not have right. It's human beings that have right. Are you with me? There's human right. There's no belief right. No belief has right. You can hold them. You can discard them. So when you violate human life in order to uphold a view, to defend a belief, I'm saying that beliefs do not have right. Let alone having a right over the right of a human person. You know, it is human beings that hold beliefs. It's not beliefs that hold humans. So you cannot, you cannot commit the heinous crime of murder in defense of a belief. At least you should not. That's why tolerance exists. Are you people with me? Yes, because... Because until, until we open the wounds properly, huh, we cannot start to cure it. And that's the national dialogue that we are not interested in having. So when we come for interfaith meeting, we just say, you are my brother, I am your brother, you know, we are together, we cannot, let's just tell our people not to fight, you know, not take laws into their hands, and... Right there at the table, one side of that table is hoping that the other side will actually believe what is being said. But one side of the table does not believe it. Sometimes they come for the meeting so that we can let our own guards down. Because they hope we will believe what is said. And go back home and say, you know, we have resolved, there's no problem anymore. Let everybody shed their sword and we are brothers. Then boom! 18 people die again. What talk say, hey, nobody should take laws into their hand. Let there be no reprisal. Suddenly there will be military men everywhere. Military people, police people, security forces, they are only usually regularly available to prevent reprisal attacks. And I'm speaking to you as someone that has witnessed all the crises in this city since 2001. I was in the middle of the 2001 crisis in Jaws. I was still quite new in Jaws. I didn't know what it was. When I saw the early signs, I thought, I thought, I thought they were advertising a product. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. I lie not. When, when, I saw, when I saw those young, young, young boys, when I saw them, they were all painted white. They were painted white from head to toe. Hanging dangerously out of the windows of those buses that do um, Terminus Bauchi Road. Those buses. They, and some of those buses still do uh, Bukuru. Those yellow and uh, green buses, right? The boots were opened. People were parked in the boots. Other people were, you know, were hanging out through the windows. All painted white. And I, I thought, I thought they were trying. I thought it was publicity. I thought it was advertisement. Maybe for like noodle or something. I did not know that that this is a killer squad. Mm. 
So I can speak from the standpoint of a first-person experience. You see, you can, you can theorize, you can do your policy, you can say anything you like to say. You cannot argue with the things I saw and I handled and I experienced. In this city, you can't. You can't. And Christians, I'd like you to know, you don't need to agree with what you don't agree with in order for peace to reign. That is the peace of a devil, of the devil. I can't remember whether it was uh, St. Augustine. Somebody had said that the holy war is better than the peace of the devil. And I want you to know that the weapons with which we war, they are not physical, they are not carnal, they are not natural, they are not material weapons. The armor of God that we are to put on. The devil knows nothing of it. They are not forged in the forgery of a blacksmith. The weapons of our warfare. They are mighty through God. That is the ideological war that is ongoing right now. Part of that ideological war is to bully you to affirm a position you do not believe. It's part of the war.